Well, we return today for our first game in charge of new club Croatian side Dinamo Zagreb. It's a chance to win the trophy as well as we're in the Croatian Super Cup final. However, I'm a little bit more concerned than I was a week ago. The new director of football is nothing special. The signings he's trying to get are nothing special. And more importantly, we've had the pre-season messages and the player of the year contenders from other clubs are a mile above the quality we've got. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 38 of the Coach's Head with me, Daniel. We are back today with Dinamo Zagreb for our first game in charge against first-time league champions Varadzin. They are the opponents in the Super Cup final before we go away to Lokomotiva in our first league game in charge. We've got a couple of players suspended for this one, as you can see. Two players that would be in contention. And we've also got a couple of signings potentially on the way with a director of football now in place. We have just had a nice windfall of 10 million quid from Manchester United as a sell-on for a player that had left the club previously. So if you're looking forward to seeing what happens with it, as the transfer budget is now 23 million pound, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Will the director of football spend? Will he improve the squad? And what tactic are we going to go for after being torn yesterday? I'm training two, but I'm prioritising one today. We'll see if it proves to be the right one. Let's start though by having a look at what's been going on off the pitch and to do that we need to meet the director of football who's now in charge of our transfer work. And here we go, the only new sign in to the staffing team since we joined the club 8 days ago is Philip Kalsic who comes in as an unattached director of football. He's rated okay, his negotiation skills are good, his judgement is pretty average and that's evident in the signings he's going for. A fairly professional personality and a good negotiator. I'm hoping, despite the fact it's his first job and he doesn't have much knowledge outside Croatia, and the fact that our recruitment team isn't great, as we saw last episode, I'm hoping he'll at least get deals done, even if they're not the best ones in the world. We'll find out if I'm right on that front. For now, though, let's go and see what he has done, because there are no players officially in or out of the club yet, I don't think. Let's just get the all transfers up again. Um, that's a lie. The one player who was a pending deal has gone out on loan. Russell Bangora, the young left back, has gone to Mlada Boleslav. And to be fair, he was about third or fourth choice, so that's not a problem. In terms of the players that might be coming in, though, there are two offers of sort of moderate money for players that are going to play different roles at this club. The first one that went in was Mathis Bruns, who is discussing his contract. He is a centre half for Nuremberg for about four million quid, rising to six. And I'm not quite sure about it. Again, terrible on the ball. It seems to be the theme. You cannot be good on the ball and a defender at this football club. Just doesn't happen. He's great positionally though. Brilliant determination. Good enough physically. Great in the air. An all round a solid defender. I'm not sure he's better than what we've got, but he's as good. But the other one is perhaps a bit more concerning because although he's a better player compared to what we've got, it is Ted Curd, a 26 year old English goalkeeper from Cincinnati. He would come in for just over 3 million quid, but he would also count as a non-EU player, which we're only allowed to have six of in the squad. We've also got to have six players trained in Croatia in our matchday squad, and at the moment we've not got the best of quality on that front. I think bar a starting left back, it's all substitutes. So Ted Kurd would be a first choice keeper. He's solid enough, maybe not the best agility though, but it would give us another tightening in the squad, because if we then keep Cardenas or whoever else, we're going to lose both goalkeeper slots or do I have to put a crap goalkeeper on the bench just to meet the quota? Possibly that's the case but no doubt he would be an upgrading goal and certainly at a better age. We have had an offer for Cardenas which you can see was rejected so I'm hoping the director of football if that gets any bigger will just say yes. He's also rejected a lot of loan moves away. He has accepted an offer for our best technical midfielder which is a bit of a concern and Baki Gay we mentioned him in the last episode bit of a surprise that we just clicked on a random 20 year old with not much ability and he ended up being the best player in possession but in other areas he wasn't as good he wouldn't have been a starter straight away but he would have been a squad player and he probably would have been a future starter but he is one of those foreign players in the squad and again the limit is six so maybe getting 4.4 million plus a big sell on fee maybe that's not a disaster I don't know and then also an interesting one on the staff in front a potential new loan manager 
none other than legendary goalkeeper Jan Oblak, who is absolutely appalling at the role, but maybe it's just a name to get the fans excited working at the club. I don't know, but yeah, I wouldn't want him judging my players and I certainly wouldn't be trusting his assessment of them based on those attributes. So that's the pending stuff, but today we've got to focus on two football matches. We start with a chance to win a competition, which is important, but the league is rated better than the championship, so it's time to get through and see how we do against the champions. I'm hoping because they were surprise champions for the first time, we might be able to get a win. They're playing a narrow diamond, something that we're going to come up against a lot this year by the looks of it. And that has maybe tempted me into a back four rather than three. Let's see the team and the squad that we've gone for. But let the assistant pick within the formation. But this initially is what I've opted for. We have gone 4 3 3. And we have gone with the intention of trying to be quite aggressive in wide areas. So the fullbacks or the wingbacks will push on a little bit. The wingers will do exactly the same. I mean, the 11 is going to be very different to this. He's picked an awful one. And he's trying to rotate to get people fit for the league next week. I want to win a trophy. But what we've opted for is get it wide, get it there quick, get four players running down the wings and get the ball in the box. It's a bit of a gamble. With a lot of teams playing narrow, they could swarm us and overpower us in the middle. But it also means that going forward, we'll have a threat in an area where other teams are light. And particularly in this game, we should then take advantage. As you can see from the bottom of the screen, we've got to meet the six non-EU players rule and the six trained in the nation, which is possibly why certain ones are starting. And I feel like the left back Simic, I feel like I might have missed him in the last episode. I'll have to go back and have a look, but I just didn't remember him being there. And then I suddenly saw a message to say he's one of the homegrown players. I thought, blimey, you're a good fullback. Why did I not mention you more in the last one? So a little bit of a pleasant surprise there, but a lot of big decisions to make. We're going to have to go through this squad very carefully. And in fact, even the crap Croatian goalkeeper, who's transfer listed by request, isn't homegrown in Croatia. So we are going to have to be a little careful. We do get 12 subs, which helps us out. We're going to pick our team. We'll be back in a minute to run through it as we go into the Croatian Super Cup final against last season's surprise champions. Well, here we are for this one then. And the biggest question I've been asking myself since I got here is what on earth were they doing in pre-season? Because we returned eight days before the Super Cup, two weeks before the league season. No one's fit in the slightest. It's really, really poor and a little bit concerning. However, I've put out what I feel is a good team. It's a 4-3-3, but it's fairly aggressive. And if we need to, we can change to the back five later down the line, depending on who we gain and lose. However, once I discovered that Simic was here and a homegrown in the nation, I kind of had to fit him into the team, to be honest. So this is the 11 we've gone for in full. We've got Gene in goal because Cardenas will probably be leaving. And to be honest, Ted Curd will be first choice next week anyway. We've got Simic and Araujo, the fullbacks. A man who's going to the Premier League in real life as I'm recording this. Clara and Baishel, the two centre-halves. Experienced duo that have played together before. Diambu in the holding role as that deep line playmaker. Tazgef moves into midfield alongside the star man Fuad for the purposes of commentary. Hugo Gonzalez and Fafana, the two wingers with Beto up front. And what that sort of means, the way I've set up the bench is that maybe not so much Malejo, but the likes of Juan Medina, who's electric quick, Krajina, the brilliant young Croatian winger. Those players can come on and be a real pace threat off the bench in the last half an hour, but neither of them anywhere near fit at the minute. Maida also offers that option up front as well. No idea how many subs we get. No idea how we compare to this team. So let's just go and get into it. The first game in charge of Dinamo Zagreb. Will it be a trophy or initial work to do? Well, it's seven changes made by our opponents today. I'm guessing from their last friendly, which brings them back up to first team level. I'm guessing by the fact they've got number one in goal, two, five and six in the team and nine and ten up front. It's a fairly strong side. Maybe that's just me being a bit old school. But our first game in charge sees Fuad as skipper in the middle. I've gone for that aerial threat. We're going to try and take advantage of back post set pieces, getting two or three attacking them. We've got a six foot four and a six foot three defender, a six foot four striker and a six foot four centre mid. We've got to make it count. This is where we need to be strong. So let's go and get through the dressing room. Let's go and say, do it for the fans, boys. No reaction whatsoever, but four were already motivated. And no stand behind one of the goals. What is this? Looks like amateur hour here, but it's a narrow diamond we're up against. It's going to be a real clash of styles, this. And there are hardly any fans in the stadium, which is incredibly concerning. Bradson have got that whole stand there. You can't tell me Dinamo Zagreb don't have any fans. 
I don't understand what's happening here. However, Simic has a throw early on and we're on the attack with Tazgef. Good ball in. Cleared away as far as Dianmu. But you can see we're being aggressive here. We do lose the ball though. And we're going to be vulnerable to this central counter-attack. We've left the two centre-halves and Dianmu in defensive positions. But we are going to be vulnerable. Why are there no Dinamo fans there on that side? As the ball's into the box away by Bichel. Back to the edge again. Tazgef wins it for Beto. I don't want you that deep. You're an advance forward. Get up the pitch. Not what we set up for. As Araujo finds Gonzalez. Are we on key highlights here? Because this doesn't look like one. We certainly are. As here he comes through at the skipper. We put him in the box to box roll to get him in that opposition's 18 yard box. It's not happening so far. As we do finally get a bit of control on the ball. Simic has support down the line. But he's going himself. Gets towards the byline. Simic to cross. Good ball to the back stick. Hugo Gonzalez up. And don't forget, he's nearly six foot as well. That's the sort of goal we want to be scoring this year. You could see Fuad arriving in the box. We have Big Beto in there as well. 1-0 after three minutes. The first shot of the game. Exactly the start we were looking for. Fantastic stuff so far. Well, 20 minutes gone. It's been pretty quiet since the goal. That's the only highlight we've seen. We're back as Clara gets on the end of a long goal kick. I don't get why they're playing a narrow diamond with technical players and then just hoofing goal kicks downfield. But... Not for me to judge, is it? They won the league last year. As Clara finds Diambu, goes wide to the right. Gonzalez finds Fuad the skipper, who's breaking away. Beto's in, was he onside? Don't know, but it was an excellent save. It remains 1-0, but it's a corner kick. The pressure is piling on, and this is where we want to take advantage. Hugo Gonzalez takes it towards that back post. By shells up, it's off the line. Definitely going to be a threat from them. A quarter gone, it's been all Dinamo Zagreb. And I know they were surprise champions, but they've offered nothing. Well, about to be half time. And I've got to say, while it's not been a vintage performance, we've hardly been outstanding. We're not fully match fit. It's been a fairly professional job well done. And this is a side that on paper I expect to beat. They were surprise champions. They're not a great side. There are four or five in the league that should challenge us. And they shouldn't be one of them. I don't know how they got to the situation they won it. But as we tell the lads to keep going... I want to make sure we get a trophy on the board. It takes a lot of pressure off this year as well. I know we're expected to win the league, but the fact that we're second in the media predictions just means we've got a trophy in the cabinet. We've got a bit of a, a moment with the fans that will get them on board. And Capan puts the ball in. It's not going to count for much now. Second minute of the second half. And the first chance they've had all game they've scored. That is atrocious defending. We're straight back up the other end, but it's not good, is it? As Diambu gets the ball into Fuad, the skipper, we need to respond quickly, but we've given the ball away with a five-yard pass. And I mentioned the fact that technically our centre-halves and most of our centre midfielders are not that good on the ball. It's very much a team of brutes and a team of aggressive players who are great in the air. As we've conceded one from another cross, follow your runners, will you? The centre-halves are six foot four and six foot three. And they've allowed a completely unmarked header in the box. They've allowed the striker to get a run on them. And a minute ago, I was talking about a professional job and a game we should be winning. Now we're 2-1 down and chasing the game. The boys look delighted with their morale, which is a big concern for me. As Simic goes wide to Fafana, we now need a response. He cuts in from the left. It's a good effort off the post. And we still look a threat going forward. But defensively... Maybe the director of football knew something I didn't. He's trying to get himself in a centre-half and a keeper. And I've got to be honest, two shots on target, two goals. It's a disgraceful game to be losing. I'm going to give him a kick up the backside. We'll give it 10 before we make subs because I want to get this 11 fit. But I also don't want to lose a trophy because of it. So we're going to have to make some changes now. Beto up front has been pretty disgraceful. So we're going to get Maeda on. Not great in the air, I don't think. No, he's 5 for 8. He can't jump. But he's quick, which might help us. I'm also going to take Fafana off on the left, who's been appalling. We're going to bring on, I think, Krajina for him. He'll go on as a traditional winger on support. Beat his man, get a cross in. Taz Jeff hasn't been great. His natural sub has obviously gone off now, which is a bit of a problem. We could go slightly more aggressive tactically. So I could actually push up Taz Jeff's replacement to a number 10. I think that might be the best option we've got. So I'll bring on... Who do I bring on? I'm going to put Medina on for Gonzalez, who's knackered. I know he scored. I'm going to have to bring on this number 10, this Edis Samadzic, who's not great. He's a very good finisher. So if we can get him up there, maybe just put him as a number 10 like so. 
or even drift him off the left slightly. Now we've got a traditional winger. Or maybe put him as a shadow striker where he'll be able to finish. How many subs do we get? Five in total. I mean, I'm tempted to take Clara off because he's been diabolical. And Avert is six foot six, gives us more of a set piece threat. So let's go for that. Five changes made, a bit of a makeshift tactic. And now a final chance to get back into a game that we should never be behind in. Simic, the left back, picks the ball up for by Shell. Simic again, looking down the left hand side. Support inside of him from Samadzic, who's got into a good position. Found Simic. Now Fuad. Skipper scores. First goal of the season. That's what we wanted him doing. Breaking into the box from those deeper areas. Not sure about the celebration, but I'll forgive you because it's 2 2. And you've got us back on level terms here, which is the crucial bit. I mean, let's be fair. The game we thoroughly deserve to be leveling, if not winning. And now we've got a chance from the corner to do just that. As Araujo to the back post to buy Shell. Where's my six foot six man? Medina gets to the byline on the left. Finds Simic. Chance to cross Medina again. Good ball up towards Fuad in the air. Fuad is the box to box hero. The skipper delivers at the big moment. He steps up to the plate with two goals. One aerial threat, but both from those deeper runs into the box. And he's going to be an absolute star this season. However, I've got to take note of this tactically. It's worked better with a number 10. Do I go for two deep midfielders and a number 10 and sacrifice maybe a Taz Jeff? But then can I move Fuad out of that midfield role? I don't want him too deep. A Simic gives the ball to Diambu. Sort of reminds me of Fellaini as Krajina finds Samadzic into Maeda. Ah, oh, the legend scores. Days and Maeda with a really tidy finish, actually. It's 4-2. He might be leaving the club soon. He was transfer listed when we arrived. He's declining. He's 32. But he's been at this club a while. He scored a lot of goals. He's done so again there. However, we're going to finish with 10 men. The backup right back is out suspended. And the first choice has just got injured. Let's hope that's not too bad. I genuinely don't know what the solution is to this one. I'm just going to have to drop one of them in at right back. I know it's not ideal for now. Samardzic is probably appalling at it. So is Medina. Medina can't cross either. So we'll get him deeper in. There we go. We're going to carry on. 4-2 up. We've done the job in the end. But God, we made hard work of that. And defensively, there is cause for concern. The new goalkeeper and centre-half can't come quick enough. But most importantly, we found our way in the end to win the trophy. The Croatian Super Cup goes to Dinamo Zagreb, deservedly so. And we start our time in charge with a victory, albeit not a convincing one. The league season starts next week and we'll need to be better than that. But for now, we enjoy lifting a trophy. And no matter what happens here at this club, We've won something, which is great for the CV. Well, I don't want to say that my luck's running out because it did at Copenhagen on the transfer front. And now Julian Araujo, the best right back at the club, is out for four months. And that maybe changes my plan to play with wing backs moving forward because the other one, the Danish player, is a natural right back and attacking right winger. So he's probably going to have to play in a back four. Not ideal to say the least that. A very horrible end to what was a pretty good day. He made his debut as well. He'd only joined a week ago. That's devastating. We're barely going to see him before Christmas now. Well, the bad news continues. The Super Cup seems to be the only bright spark of the day. After losing a row Joe for half a season, we've now lost out on Mattis Bruns, who has rejected the contract offer here. It was the same as what he's earning there, 25 grand a week. That's good money. But no big centre-half coming in. And the defensive improvements that we were clearly crying out for from that game don't seem to be forthcoming. Well, the next transfer news of the day is an accepted offer for another player that we inherited on the transfer list. Christopher Mamengi, 31-year-old centre-half, 500 grand from Rotherham. Do you know what? That's not a bad deal. He's only got one year left on his contract. He's not the best personality. He's not even second or third best in most positions. A very good pro, but he's past his prime. He's on a big wage. I think that's a good deal. Well done, director of football. Well, next big deal of the week, as well as Jan Oblak now joining as loan manager, is Mbaki Gay has left the club. He's gone to Ren for what may eventually be four and a half million plus a sell on, but 40% of our current fee has gone straight back to his former club. So we've lost out on a bit of money there, but I'm hoping in the long term that deal will be worth it. Not one I would have been delighted to make, but I can understand it. So with four days to the new season, I'm waiting anxiously to see if we get at least a new goalkeeper. Well, perhaps in a slight surprise draw in the Europa League, the Bresson have gone out and we've now drawn Nefsi for an Azerbaijani side managed by, wait a minute, 
Atria Mutu, of all people. One of the leagues that's not loaded, though, Azerbaijan. So we'll see if we can get past them. Hopefully we will. Well, Friday afternoon, and finally, some good news, because we've got a sign in a senior level, and it is the goalkeeper we needed. Ted Curd, the 26-year-old Englishman, joins from the MLS, 18 grand a week, 3 million quid. It's a pretty good deal, and no work permit, apparently, either. We're going to have to send him on a language course, but he's rated 3.5 star ability, and he has a huge step up from Cardenas and Gannett, which I think means if we go over to the squad planner now, I can put Ted Curd as first. And I can move Cardenas right to the bottom. Get him out of the club. Get the money for him while you can. We can get half a million quid. That's great business for a 35-year-old. There is also another senior offer, though. Marco Maric. In fact, he's not a director of football, is he? This might be a youngster. Bufara. He is indeed a 17-year-old, but with pretty big potential and would become homegrown in the nation. He is a centre-forward from Brazil who can't finish. I mean, he's not a bad wide player. We'd have to retrain him there permanently. But as a striker, God, he's awful. So not much hope from that one. Well, another offer rejected for Cardenas. A youngster who we've had an offer rejected for as well. Beto's got a contract clause if he appears in 15 games, which might be a problem for us with him turning 35. So hopefully we get a signing in that area as well. Rajeka have opened their season with a win. There's plenty of other teams in action today as well. So we could go into it running behind already, which will put pressure on tomorrow's game. Albeit, it's one that according to the season preview, we should win. Well, it's match day and we have big offers in and out. We've got a senior offer we can see for Yanidis. We've got two offers in, a Ver being a first teamer as well. Graf being a homegrown player. We've also had a surprise start to the season. Osijek drawing, Hadjik split losing. Putting a lot of pressure on us to get the victory here. You need this first. How good are you? You are a centre forward, a 32 year old, 4 million quid offer. Okay, I was going to complain about him being 34, but that is a second very good striker. I'm not going to complain if we get him from Panathinaikos. The two offers coming in are there. Offer's been rejected, which is good. And Graf, offer rejected, which is good. We've announced the season ticket sales, which are up by 50. We'll take the credit for that, the extra 50 season tickets. We've only got a couple of hours to kick off. We'll be back in a minute to run through the team. Here we go then, the final game of the match day. And as I mentioned, we're going to be coming up against the Narrow Diamond a lot this season. What we've got to do though from last week's team is work out who comes back in because we have had a new goalkeeper come in in Ted Curd, who will definitely start as number one. Gene will be on the bench. Araujo will be replaced by Veladson, who is returning from suspension. He's pretty solid in that role, but he's not as good as Araujo. It's as simple as that. We've also got Suzlov coming back from his suspension, who is a good player. We maybe won't start this one. I might stick with the three that played last time. I know Taz Jeff wasn't great. What I might do, because we were a threat later on, is put him as an advanced playmaker on attack. Just give him that license to go further and see if that makes a bit of a difference. And Suzlov can replace Samardzic on the bench. I know he played well when he came on last week, but Suzlov's the better player there. So Ted Curd makes his debut in goal. Viladsen comes in at right back. The rest of the 11 is the same as the cup final. Hopefully, we'll defend a bit better than we did in that one. Away to Lokomotiva we go. Two of the big boys already failed to win this weekend. Let's see if we can open up in style. As Ted Curd, the new number 24. What a glamorous number that is. Let's go and get through to the match. See how we get on. Well, here we go. A big game between two of the Zagreb sides. And we know that most of the sides at this level have got three or four good young players, if nothing else. We've seen a lot of surprises, both in last season's title winners and in this opening weekend. So as we go through to the first half, I'm not going to be complacent. I'm not going to assume this side are in European qualifying. As Taskev puts the corner in, is that a handball? The keeper came, but I think the defender got something on it first. Looked like the keeper was just going to catch it behind him, so seems a little bit odd. We've got a penalty review, though. VAR is in Croatia, and it's given us a penalty. Beto will be the man to step up and take it, I would assume. I think he was the best taker. Here he is. Not scored in the opener, but he does just about there. The goalkeeper went the right way. It was a good height for him. I'd argue the keeper will be disappointed not to have saved that. But Beto's off the mark as a Dinamo Zagreb. And after winning the Super Cup, we're one up on the league debut as well. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me literally three minutes later. 
Valadsen's got injured as well. Every right back is falling over. Graf is a natural centre half. Can anyone actually play right back naturally? Paul King can, but he can't cross the ball. Grucic is a holding midfielder. God, this is brutal. It's going to have to be Paulkin then. What a start to the season. Big injuries to your two right backs in the first two games. In the first 10 minutes, yet again, every good bit of news is followed by a terrible one. As it's a free kick now for the hosts. It's going to be whipped into the box to the back post. Headed away by Bichel, but not defended brilliantly. Turco's in unmarked. Honestly, I've put so much into setting up the set pieces. And I've put so much into training them as well. Ted Kurtz let that one in from an almost impossible angle. And he's got away with murder. Ted Kurtz, you lucky boy on debut. The offside flag has saved us. But this is far from convincing as an opener. Well, approaching half time, I don't want to get complacent. It's been another quiet game. It's looked very similar to what we did last week. But we saw what happened at the start of the second half there. So I'm not going to say... Go on, I'm really happy with you. I'm going to say I don't want to see any complacency because we saw that last week and it almost cost us. We're into the second half. We've got through that first five minutes. We were 2-1 down by this point last week. We've done some things a little better. And we've got to accept that given we missed most of pre-season and these lads were completely unfit when we got here, it's going to take a while till we see the best from them. But we have got to keep getting results still. Tagsef again is going to come off. This time, no, he'll be replaced by Thomas Suslov who wasn't available last week. Fafana on the left will be replaced by Krujina. Medina will come on on the right for Gonzalez. They're the two that we're going to keep doing. We're going to go winger on support out there. And then what else can we do? Defensively, Simic is looking a little bit nervy. He's not fully fit. Do I go for the experience of Bjorkshan? I think we do. Let's get him on for the final 25. And just hope we can hold on for a good away win. Given the results we saw yesterday, it doesn't have to be pretty. If we can win 1-0, I'll be absolutely thrilled with it. Well, Beto is knackered up front. And on Thursday night, we might regret not taking him off. But for now, Bjorkan's down the left with the ball in towards him. He's headed away as far as Puklin, the sub right back. We know he's not the best in the cross, but he just runs in alone. And that might make a difference. Medina's shot is blocked. It's away as far as by Shell. I've got to say, we do look good in those wide areas. We're having to deal with the narrow threat, which at the moment we are. And we've not offered a shot on target against us yet. But to be fair, it's the quality of chances you give away, not the amount. But we do win 1-0. It's a really big result, that. I think we're going to see for the first month, we're not going to be winning convincingly. This is going to be about clinging on, getting results, and getting through to when these lads are fit. For now, though, it's two wins out of two. I'm absolutely delighted with that. Let's go and have a look at the schedule. After seeing how bad this injury is, two to three weeks. I can live with that. It could have been a lot worse. It does leave us with a problem for Thursday night and for European qualifying. I think we'll get through the next tight and then he should be fit again. Ted Kurtz keeps a clean sheet on debut thanks to a narrow offside decision. If we have a look at the schedule, we will be back for one of two things next time around. We'll either, if the first leg of this tight is close against NFC, we'll come back for the second leg and then Rajeka away, which could be two really big matches. If not, We'll skip to the next round and we'll do the second leg there, which will give us more European qualifying action, probably with higher stakes. And then an away game against Varadzin, who we played in the Super Cup, but were last season's champions and we know will be a difficult game. So if you enjoyed this one, two big victories, far from convincing, but we did the job. And please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you think of the signing of Ted Curd and the new director of football. And if you want to stay up to date and see how we get on in European qualifying, then please do subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We'll be back in a couple of days' time from the next instalment in this one. But between now and then, it is a big finish to the season at Southend United. Our 15th year is finishing with potentially historic moments. You can come and join us for that one again tomorrow at the usual time. But for now, you can find links to other playlists, the Twitch channel and the football podcast all up in the eye above. We'll see you back here again in a couple of days' time as our start to our tenure at Dinamo Zagreb continues to look pretty tricky.